it's Miss Jess. Today for Art Lab, I'm going to show you how to make a simple art project inspired by the Russian painter Vasily Kandinsky. Let's get started. Vasily Kandinsky was born in December of 1866 in Moscow, Russia. As an adult, he studied law until he decided to follow his true passion, painting. He moved to Germany and began the Blue Rider Artists Group in his 30s. This group was interested in abstract expressionism art, meaning art that does not look like reality and focuses on how an artist feels. He taught at the prestigious Bauhaus School and continued painting up until his death in December of 1944. An interesting fact about Kandinsky was that he had a genetic condition called synesthesia or joint perception, which allowed him to see colors when he listened to music and heard music when he painted. This played a big role in creating his artwork, which tended to look abstract. One famous piece that represents his synesthesia is Fragment 2 for Composition 7, created in 1913. Synesthesia is so rare that only one out of every 5,000 people have it. Kandinsky is one of the most influential artists in modern art and is often considered the pioneer of abstract painting. His artwork can be viewed in museums all over the world, including the Art Institute of Chicago. The art we are creating today is inspired by his painting Squares with Concentric Circles, created in 1913. All you're going to need for this activity is a piece of paper, something to color with, and a pencil or pen. If you pick up one of our kits, it will include already a pre-made four by three grid that has an outline of an apple in each square. But you have the option to draw your own apples, make your own grid. I would recommend if you're starting out with a blank piece of paper to get a ruler so that way you can make straight lines. So instead of circles, I'm working with a fall theme, which is apples but you can also choose to do circles, just like Kandinsky's original piece, or you can do other designs such as leaves. This activity is really yours for interpretation. You can do whatever you want, and it's a great way of exploring color. The first thing I have been doing is getting my black crayon and just outlining each apple. Once I outline every apple, I'm going to pick a variety of crayon colors so that way I can color in the apples and the squares. You can choose to use only a few colors or you can use a whole rainbow of colors. This is the part where you get to decide. Once you've picked your first color, you're going to go into the first apple and color in a circle or oval shape. Then you're gonna go in with a second color and you're gonna color around that first color. And then you're gonna go in with another color. And you're going to wanna do at least three colors in the apple, but you could also do as many as you like. I'm going in with a bunch of colors to start out. If you're looking for different colors to choose from, you could always do primary colors which are red, yellow, and blue. And those are the colors that you cannot create by mixing with other colors. You could also do just secondary colors, which would be green, orange, and purple. You could even do just complementary colors, which are colors that are opposites on the color wheel. So for example, yellow is complementary to purple, red is complementary to green, and blue is complementary to orange. You can also pick colors based on if they are warm or cool colors, meaning warm as in reds, oranges, and yellows, cool colors as in blues, greens, and purples. Something that I'm doing, which you can also do if you would like, 
is I am taking whatever color I color in the middle of my apple and then using that same color for the box next to that apple. Meaning the first apple you see, I colored the middle part red and I am now coloring in the box on the outside of the next apple red as well. For my second apple, I colored the middle yellow. So I'm going to take that same yellow crayon and I'm going to color the box next to that one yellow. If you're unsure of what colors to use still, definitely look at Kandinsky's squares with concentric circles piece, the one that this whole project is based off of. You can see all the different colors he uses and take inspiration from that. Lastly, you do not have to use crayons. If you would prefer to use markers or oil pastels or watercolors, or you could use a combination of watercolors and crayons, definitely go with what you want to do. This is your chance to experiment and be creative. The very last thing I want to mention is that Art Lab is going to continue virtually for the rest of 2020, so you can watch a new episode every month. And if you choose to complete your Kandinsky piece and you would like to share it with us, I would love to see it. You can take a picture of it and send it to our youth email address at the library, or if you're feeling comfortable, you could always bring it in to show us. Thank you guys so much for watching and enjoy the rest of the video.